Hi everyone, this is Lisa from Canine Clips and this is Snickers. And Snickers is a mixed breed, so um, we're not quite sure what kind of breed he is. Um, but he's got um, you know, some characteristics of possibly a Havanese, well, possibly a Schnauzer with the longer snout. But, um, you know, and he's got lots of curls, so he could have some poodle in there. So there's a, a wide variety we got for him. But uh, he's a nice, relaxed boy. He's about 11 years old. And uh, we're coming in today, and I'm going to be um, giving him a rounded face and a number 10 body today. So I'm going to start with the face, as I usually do. And uh, we'll get started here. So he's a very relaxed little boy, as you can see, and with all my grooming, as you can see in all my videos, I don't use any restraints, I just use my uh, techniques by holding them and maneuvering them with my hands, and uh, they seem to do just quite well, even if they're a little bit more difficult, as I do have some videos of some dogs that are a little more nervous, a little more anxious, and, uh, you know, they they can get a little bit nippy on me, but I can still be um, able to work with them without having to restrain. I do usually put a cone on them, but uh, don't need to use restraints, I find, on any dog. As, uh, it's not really necessary to get the job done. I'm just going to trim in his ear a little bit, just get the hair on the outside of it. And then after I'll come back and pluck any hair in there. He's being a little camera shy. So I've, uh, I do on my channel here, I have lots of videos of me grooming various dogs um, or just showing um, any uh, issues of health concerns of ear infections or just stuff to look out for when grooming and some quick tips as well so I appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel so that um, you could see more videos like that and of course that always helps me out too to keep going and um, you can also comment on any of the videos to let me know if there's anything specifically you'd like to see. And when it comes available, I will put it on. But of course, I never know what's, uh, what's coming with my dogs until they get here and to see what stage they're in or what uh, ailments they may have, if there are any at all. Other than usually being a little bit poofy. That's usually the standard, but I don't know if they're going to be matted or if they're going to have any health concerns at all to uh, post. So I just kind of do them as they come. So when I do the ears there, I'm making sure I'm uh, having my thumb as the guide. So we're doing like a little bit uh, longer rounded ears with him. So let's layer them up there. Okay, and then I'm just going to pluck them out here while I got them. And not too much hair in there, so he's got really nice healthy ears. And not very much at all, so just a little bit to take out. Oh, and this ear I'm going to round up. <laughs> he just uh, is shy with the camera. A little closer. There we go. And this is all preliminary as well because I'll be coming back after and checking it over. After I do the bath and blow dry. And then I give them a grooming with the clippers. And then I do a second blow dry, which uh, kind of poofs up anything and lets me see anything that I may have missed. So 
And then I will come back with the uh, clippers again, just to clean up everything. And give him his final trim. Okay, so I'm going to start on the feet now. dogs that are usually pretty relaxed like this um, but there's always nervous ones my dog is one of those even though he's my dog he shakes up here the whole time it's not like he doesn't know what's going on but he just doesn't like being groomed I've done him a few times on here already on the YouTube so and he's always one of the nervous ones so it's just some dogs are temperaments are more relaxed than others so although they don't like being here they sure like the feeling they feel after they're done nice and clean and um, cooler most likely because I've usually trimmed them down and or gotten mats out or gotten that undercoat out so usually is a good day for them All right. So when I first started grooming, many years ago, it's been about just coming up on 16 years, actually. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but when I first started, um, it was taking me about three and a half to four hours to groom a dog. So if you're just starting out, even grooming your own dog or deciding to start your own business, um, it can take a while to get, uh, get through this process. They don't stay as nice as they do here. And I understand that. And because um, I was there too. But with time and me gaining confidence and knowing where exactly I'm supposed to be trimming and such and so forth, I've, um, over the years here, I've gotten down to basically about 45 minutes to groom a, a dog. And that includes, as you'll see, the bath and the trim and everything in between there. So... Um, you do get faster with time because you're just uh, able, you know, you can see where to hold the clippers and how to read the dogs better because they kind of tell you what they want and what they don't want. And even though, you know, they don't have too much of a stay about getting groomed, you can still work with them as best you can to keep them comfortable. Not every dog is like uh, Snickers here where they stay nice and calm. Some of them like to move around and they have really fidgety feet. So you're trying to work with that. But, uh, but it is still a really nice, beautiful job that I enjoy coming to and doing every day. I actually just work out of my house and I've always just worked out of my house. So it is, uh, that's another beautiful thing, having the people come to me and uh, I don't have to worry about traffic and I don't have to worry about the weather. And if somebody cancels, I'm at home so I can just uh, go work in the yard. So it's a really good job if that's something you're interested in. But it is a lot of work as well. I do have a video on it of all the things you should consider if you're thinking about becoming a dog groomer. All the things I, you know, experience and just things to consider as well before you get started if that's something that you're seriously looking at. But um, 15 or 16 years later, I'm still really enjoying it. It's a, a really fun job. So 
there's always an option to do that if that's something you're interested in. Who couldn't love working with dogs every day? It's always nice to see when the dog gets picked up how happy they are and, and how happy the owners are too. <laughs> so to see uh, how, uh, how they appreciate your work by just by seeing them smile and, and compliment the dog on how handsome they look or how good they smell or whatever the case may be. So you always feel good at the end of the day just knowing you've made somebody else happy. Okay, so halfway done here on the feet. Let's get a turn him around. We'll do the other side. And there's quite a bit of hair in there. As well. And I keep meaning to, I'll have to do it one time just specifically of just um, comparing using the clippers in the pads to scissors as someone uh, one of my uh, viewers had suggested you know asking why I don't use clippers and I just never have and uh, I was worried that maybe you wouldn't be able to get as deep down into the pads because sometimes there's matting in there and it's hard to get down in there I would think with this clippers but uh, I'll be getting a blade here soon and then I'm going to try it out and let you know how that goes. But to me, I find that this uh, looks really good. Um, but I could understand uh, it might be a little faster, but I don't know if it would be more stressful or less stressful to the dogs. Of course, with Snickers here, I don't think it would matter either way. But I'm we're more thinking about dogs that are really nervous, that have really fidgety feet, how I work with them. So I don't know if they'd like that. So I don't know if that would cause more stress or less stress. So like I said, I will be trying that out just to see um, if it is better or not. Okay. And as I mentioned before, um, I'm always looking for new ideas on what you guys would like to see. I've been just doing a lot of full grooms lately as people want to see the whole process, which is understandable. And then I continue to point out anything that I notice that is unique on any dog and just just doing a short little you know minute or two minute video on on that as well and you know if I notice anything for health of um, ear infections or um, bacteria infections or unique cuts that I've done I've done a couple mohawks and uh, a few exciting things with some dogs that I've posted as well There we go, and we're on to the last foot, and then we'll kind of comb out the tail, see if there's any matting in there, and then I kind of will trim it up a little bit, just so I don't have to worry about as much of bath I'm doing a wet tail. And that's why I like to do the feet too at this point, because uh, it's a lot easier to trim dry feet rather than uh, the wet wet feet wet hair in there get in there a little bit easier because they are the hardest part to dry because even with the blow dryer and such they're always obviously standing on them and um, plus it makes the pads a lot softer if they're wet so it's a lot better with the scissors in there as well I also on some videos have uh, 
a student that I've been training. So I just show you how um, it's a little bit different from someone who's been doing it as long as I have to someone who's just starting out and she's at about six months now or just over six months and um, she's doing really good. She has all the techniques but she's just a little bit slower and that's all it is. It just takes longer with anything obviously when you're first starting out um, to get uh, more familiar with the ins and outs of everything of trimming and working with the dogs and getting comfortable and uh, as your confidence grows and your skill set grows the dogs do respond better to you as well so there are a few videos that I have with her in there and I, I do mark the videos as training or you know experienced groomer versus you know new groomer or something like that so there are a few videos like that but if you'd like to see more just let me know she'll be training with me for for the next few months here before she starts her own business so and that dew claw i also have some videos just on you know what to do if the dew claw is curled and uh, stuff like that as well so that uh, there's some more difficult nails sometimes there's some nails that are curled right under or they go to the pad or through the pad so there's a uh, different techniques that i use for those uh, cutting those types of nails as well that i do show you in the videos and they're just focused on that rather than showing you the whole groom and then you know have that in between it's easier for people to find i thought instead of having to watch a whole video like this so i'm just thinning out his hair a little bit just because it is quite thick there's a little bit of mats but not much just right here at the base so just using the thinning shears will help take out a little bit of that bulk just to prevent some mats from happening so, but I also am able to keep the length so you can't really notice that I took out a big chunk of hair like I just did but then it helps prevent you know mats from coming so that's the big chunk I took out okay now I'm just gonna give this a trim and as you can see here you know, I don't mind if the dogs sit or stand or walk around or move around. Just as long as they're comfortable and I'm still able to do what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm going to raise this up. And we are going to take him to get a bath. Alright, so to the tub. And this is all in my room here. That I have set up. Eventually, I'll do a, a video of uh, my grooming setup for you guys. Just been, it's my busiest time of year as it is summer. And um, in the summer seasons in Canada, we, we get some pretty warm days. And... Uh, the dogs like to be a little shorter, so I'm just going to refill my shampoos here because they're empty. So I just use a concentrated shampoo and I just I have it on a pumper and I just pump one into each. So there's the pumper there. Just pump one into each and then fill the rest with water. And then these are old Heinz bottles. Um, I believe they used to be mustard. But they are the old, uh, they have the, the thicker material for the mustard, so the, the plastic is a little bit thicker, which is nice. Um, 
because it's really soft and flexible and it lasts for a very long time. I've actually had those same bottles, I think, well, I can't even remember, but it's over 10 years anyways. I don't even, I have never replaced them. So I don't know how early on I started with them. And then on the top, I just put a, a ketchup lid. And then uh, that way, when I flip the bottle over, it doesn't spill out. It only, it only comes out when I squeeze the bottle. So they have been a lifesaver. So you can see that. And then I just kind of mix it together. And that will give me several shampoos just from that one pump. Okay, so now I'm going to bath. And I have my water on a temperature control. So I don't have to worry about it getting too hot for the dogs. So I can just turn it all the way up. And then I never have to worry about readjusting the temperature. And then when you're going around the ears, you want to make sure you're not shooting that water directly into the ear of the dog. And there we go. There it is first. Went down. I'm just going to shake this up a little bit more. And then I get a bath too. Always make sure you get them a good lather, of course, especially in those legs because they tend to carry the most. I do their face as well. And Snickers is a pro at this, just demonstrating how to be a great dog when being groomed. He could have his own series. He's just so relaxed. Relaxed, but still doesn't want to be here. I guess he's more of a behaved dog, I would say, maybe more than relaxed. He tolerates me. You know, like I said, even my own dog doesn't like this process. If, even if I think about grooming him, I think he can read my mind because those days he's hiding somewhere. And any other day he comes no problem. Alright, so I get that little cleaned out here. You can water a little bit dirty as, as normal. want to make sure you give them a good rinse out because if they do have the soap left in there it'll become a little bit irritating to the skin and then of course I have a sink stopper at the bottom just to catch any hair which keeps my uh, drain hopefully hair free but I'm sure some get in there but just for maintenance of the hair drain or the drain so that it doesn't get full of hair because it would get pretty full if uh, after every dog I don't uh, take that hair out of that drain and it would go down the, the drain there so yeah so this is just one dog there all right so I'm gonna get ready to blow dry him just waiting for him to shake but he's not gonna want to I guess Usually that takes, takes off a little bit more hair or water for me. And I begin to shake them out. Okay. Well, he doesn't want to shake, so... Oh, there we go. There 
There we go. Okay, so now I'll take them back to the grooming area. We'll get the camera set up a little bit better once I take the fur off the table. And I'm actually going to lower it a little bit for when I blow dry. So it's easier for me when I'm doing the top of the body and stuff. Okay. So I'll try to get as much as I can with the towel. And there's our boy. Okay, so then I'm going to do this first blow dry, and then I'll be able to start with the clippers. We're going to do that number 10, as I said, so get started on that. So it'll get a little noisy for a little bit. just the first one here and as uh, if you could see during the video there I made sure that when I am blow drying him I'm making sure that there's no direct air going into his ears as well because that could cause also issues so I kind of push them down and just to uh, keep his ears uh, clear of that just gonna add a little oil to my clippers and we'll get started. So, so now I'm going to be using the number 10 blade on him. And I'll move it back. See a little better. And of course the fur is still a little bit down. And like I said before, I will be, once I'm done this grooming, which is just going to be quick, I'm going to come back to, uh, Blow dry him again, and then I'll come back with the number 10 clippers, and that'll clean up anything that kind of gets missed. But right now, I just want to take off the bulk of the fur. And I'm not worried about it being all perfect, which it can never be anyway, because the hair always curls and such and so forth. But he's got beautiful thick fur, but no matting at all. 
And this owner just likes them nice and short for the summer. And as I said, our summers get quite hot. So it's nice to have a cool little doggy. And then in the winter time, you'll notice uh, I'm going to be starting to do longer cuts with a longer blade and scissors. Um, so there'll be quite a variety I have as um, each dog will has several cuts that I do on them and then the owner just lets me know which one they'd like to do at that time. Dependent on the weather, as our weather, we have so many different weather seasons here. So it can be always, each dog has about three to five cuts that I do on them. And it just changes with with the weather and then add whatever the owner prefers at that time when they bring them in. So I don't really have a standard cut for any dog because it's not my dog and I'm just here to provide a service. So whatever the owner is looking to have done, that's what I will do. Do the best because sometimes I can't uh, keep it as long as they would like if the dog is matted. So if you want to start grooming, get a dog like this. <laughs> it's very easy to do for your first time. So you know, just make sure you request somebody to bring their dog that listens very nicely and doesn't move. And then you'll be fine. And if only it could be that easy, right? But that's one thing I like about dog grooming too, is that you don't know who you're getting. Even though they're regular clients, you don't know what state the dog will be in when they come. I have, I do take a picture of the dogs when I'm done grooming them. So that's how I can remember what length. And plus, of course, I write it down. But then that just, uh, when the owner comes with their dog, I just kind of show them a picture the pictures or if I have multiple ones of the different grooms I've done and they can just kind of let me know what they want at that time so I'm just going to change out my blades so that's very important that you want to keep the blades cool so you're keeping on checking on them and it does help that the fur is a little damp to keep the blades a little bit cooler but uh, you still want to regularly check them because they still will get warm. So this process is generally the fastest. You know, the, the nail trimming and the face trimming are uh, usually what's going to take you the longest to do at any, at any stage. Whether you're just starting out or even an experienced groomer, those do take the longest to do. Because it's just a little bit more delicate or sensitive areas that you got to take your time with a little bit more. And you've got nice, you know, sharp objects. And on the dog, so, and then of course, um, Sometimes there's staining around the eyes as well. So those, uh, those generally take a little bit longer to do. Um, and even the feet, generally they're a little bit sensitive around their feet. Or there can be matting in there. And even doing their nails as well, same kind of thing. And 
from here, the next stage for me is, uh, as I mentioned, I'll be giving another blow dry. And just to get any more moisture off the fur, if I can, but also that'll help poof up the fur and allow me to get in there again with the clippers to give a nice clean finished look. So that'll be the last stage of cleaning up everything and then just uh, put a solution in the dog's ears to make sure um, there's no moisture in there. So I just put a solution in to make sure it uh, dries it out nice. I'm just going to comb out my, or brush out my clipper blades because the hair is getting a little bit caught in there. I'll come back with the scissors just to get that cleaned up. And in a room like this, it's nice to have, I have a vent, uh, just a bathroom vent that I use to take out some of the humidity because it gets quite humid. And I also do have an air conditioner. This that's in the window there so that if I need to really get the humidity out I can do that quickly as well in those hot days because uh, when you're hot and humid it makes everything a little more stressful and not as pleasant to be working in any environment I guess as you probably know so it's uh, very important to have that kind of set up and when I first started grooming, I just had been working in the bathroom. So I had that. But I didn't have the air conditioner, which I soon learned was a necessity as well. Because it sometimes you just can't pull out all the humidity, especially if the room is already warm. And you can't get all of that out. So I do find that having the... Uh, and just a little window air conditioner does really help a lot. All right, so I'm gonna do the bum area here. I'm just gonna lift up the tail. So usually I do a, just a little bit, oops, sorry, just a little bit under there. I shave that down because if it grows out, it kind of hangs into the bum area. So I'll take that off as well. Just a little bit up the bum. Okay, so there we go. So I'm just gonna kind of clean off the table again. And I haven't gone back and uh, trimmed up the head yet, just because I'll wait till I kind of do the second blow dry. Because usually um, he's not too bad, but usually they don't like their face being blow dry or their head. So sometimes I wait to the second blow dry to really get finish up the head part. All right, so we're gonna start the blow dry again.
second blow dry. So you can see it uh, pulled up a few. The hair poofed it up a little bit. So this is how I'm able to get a nice, clean, finished look on the dog. Um, because I actually trim them twice. And you can see it just takes a little bit off um, to give it that clean, finished look. Because even though the first one looks pretty good, you really don't know till you get under there, put the blow dryer on it. So even if dogs, they come in um, already bathed, I will still use the blow dryer on them just to kind of poof up everything. And I'll go back again with the clippers to just trim them up again. To give them that real finished clean look before the owner comes. So it's nice because all the feet are already done and then I can see because sometimes with the bath a little bit between the toes comes out as well so I can go back and clean that up as well so it gives me a chance to kind of go over the dog again and then even under there I can just trim my clippers um, but I usually pull the skin out and just be aware of where I'm trimming And it's all nice and poofy for me. So if you haven't done so already, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Uh, you can see all the wonderful videos that I put out every day. I put one video a day out um, in the later afternoon, which is 4 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And I uh, have a variety of different uh, grooming techniques I use, but also some tips on um, health concerns that I may notice, or just what to watch out for. Um, there's also a few on unique dogs that I groom or just unique cuts that I've done on dogs as well. Cute little puppies. So how to groom a puppy for the first time. So I do have quite a variety of videos on there right now and I'm continuing to put them out as, as my clients keep coming in. So, quite an, quite an exciting job that I enjoy doing. I just wanted to share it with you guys and my clients are pretty excited to see their, their dogs on YouTube become famous. But also it's nice for them to be able to see how, uh, how their dogs behave with me. And that they can know that they're being old males being taken care of and that they're they're not too uncomfortable with me. Kind of the biggest reason why I started. And it's always comforting for the owner, I would think, to be able to see this and know that their dog is being treated well. And it's too stressed out while they're here. But of course, they still always love to go home. But I'm sure they're feeling a lot better. There. So you can see it doesn't take off too much fur when I do that. But it just gives that nice, clean look. Just finish everything off. Okay, so then, yeah, like I said, I'll just check uh, there's some areas I can trim with the scissors and then I'm just going to finish up his head here his face so usually that always kind of comes over kind of just layer that back so when it grows out it'll keep out of his eyes and then I'll take a little bit more off the top there since we have a nice short body 
kind of match the head a little bit so it's a, a rounded head but a little bit shorter so it kind of grows out at the same pace that the body will be growing out at. And as I've mentioned in other videos, when I do hold the dog, I'm making sure I don't put any pressure on the throat. I'm kind of just holding him by the front of the muzzle here, just so I can kind of maneuver him around a little bit if I need him to be in a certain way, direction, so I can just keep cutting nice and with a nice flow. You don't want to put any pressure on that throat to impact their breathing at all. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this video. And like I said, please comment if there's anything specific you'd like to see. I'm just gonna put in the ear solution so that just helps any moisture that's been in there. Just to make sure they dry out nice. And then uh, for the grand finale, I do a little toothbrush. So I just have uh, toothbrushes from the dollar store that I use. He's got beautiful teeth for his age. That is important for keep your dog healthy. And have nice healthy teeth and gums. There we go. So that is Snickers and his groom. So I hope you enjoyed that video. And I appreciate you taking the time to watch. And I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.